You know, Louisiana is one of the states being hit hardest by this new surge in coronavirus cases. The governor says it now has more virus-related hospitalizations now than at any other point in the pandemic. In March, Julia Letlow won a special election to become the first Republican woman from Louisiana to serve in Congress. The election was held because her husband, Luke, died from COVID in December. His death came just weeks after he was elected to the same congressional seat, but he died just a couple of weeks before he could be sworn in. In an interview that you will see only on CBS This Morning, we traveled to Louisiana and I sat down with the congresswoman to talk about what her late husband went through and to get her message to those people who are still unvaccinated. He and I had, had prayed for weeks prior about the possibility of the vaccine, and we were so excited that it was coming out um, and that it was going to be widely available, and he missed it by two weeks. Congresswoman Julia Letlow's husband, Luke, had just been elected to Congress when he got sick. He looked at me and said, um, honey, I feel like I'm running a fever, and my heart sank. Okay. He isolated upstairs in their home, and she stayed downstairs with their children, Jacqueline, age one, and Jeremiah, three. He had no pre-existing conditions, so there was just no reason why uh, it had to go down that path, coughing nonstop. And by about the eighth day, he called me upstairs and just said, honey, I think it's time to go to the hospital. It's right before Christmas, and I drove him to our hospital here, and um, he cried on the way because he was upset about missing Christmas with his kids. Jacqueline's first Christmas and Jeremiah's that he would be able to remember. By that point, she says that 50% of his lungs were just filled with COVID pneumonia. From his hospital bed, Luke Letlow, who was a former congressional chief of staff, was working the phones like he was known to do best. It got so bad I had to take the phone away because he wasn't resting and like the doctors were telling him to, but he was having conversations and he was saying goodbye to people and uh, telling them he was at peace. And it all happened very quickly, where he was very aware and cognizant and um, speaking to people, and then um, kind of crossed over a threshold where I started to see um, the color drain. And that's when it hit me that he might not come home. When the time came to have the talk about whether to place him on a ventilator, Luke Letlow was ready. I called his parents and they prayed over him. I called my parents and they prayed over him. And every night before bed, we had this ritual where we say the blessing over our children as they go to bed. And that is? Uh, Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I give you peace. And I said that over him. Those were the last words. And I told him I loved him and I kissed him goodbye. And I was washing his feet, you know, and for Christians that can be very, really symbolic. And I had no idea that I was preparing him and how special that moment was for both of us. Right now, the Congresswoman's state of Louisiana is seeing its worst surge yet in COVID infections and hospitalizations. And she started to take a look at the statistics in her own district in Northern and Central Louisiana. With few exceptions, every parish falls below 30% fully vaccinated. Now, I'm from Lafayette. Right. Are some of the folks who are listening to everybody but the doctors, what do you say to them? People don't want to um, feel forced into anything. They don't want to be lectured to. They don't, you know, we are a very prideful, strong people in Louisiana. I just said, what, what can I do? Is there anything I could do to help? with the misinformation out there, with all of the confusion and fear. And, um, and someone asked, well, what would, you, what would you tell somebody who was on the fence about possibly receiving the vaccine? And uh, I said, I'd tell them about Luke. I would tell them my story. So she and her team started thinking, what could they do to memorialize the stories of COVID's victims? There's power in stories. And so, we, we talked about it and said, well, well, let's put together this bill. It's the COVID-19 American History uh, Project Act that will provide a space to collect those stories for the Library of Congress. I would have given anything. I would have given 
everything for that shot to be available for us. I mean, looking back now, and for someone to turn it away, I just, it, it's heartbreaking to me. Luke Letlow is buried under this cedar tree next to his grandfather in Start, Louisiana. My plot is right next to him, and all I want is a little footstone that says, and she followed up. <laughs> the congresswoman now splits her time between Washington, D.C. and home in northeastern Louisiana. See the duckies? Let's go. Let's go find them. As she moves forward raising their two children. If the vaccines were to become available for children as young as your kids, would you get them vaccinated? On the first day. My prayer is that not one more person has to lose their life to this virus. It is a horrific way to leave this world. I don't wish it on anyone else. We have the answer. Let's use it. We also talked about all of the misinformation that she says some of her constituents are buying into about vaccines. And that misinformation, she says, was really hard for her. In the middle of all her grief, the Congresswoman says she literally sat down and went through hateful messages directed to her husband on social media, saying that, no, he didn't die of COVID, he died of a heart attack or something else. And she literally deleted those because she said, I couldn't stand to continue reading them. She's hoping that what you just heard, her story, his story, might change your opinion. I sure hope so, David. I'm just struck by, in the middle of all that, she's, he, she, he are getting hateful comments. Yeah. That's, still. that's what just blows yeah, me still. away. And I look at the children who I think will remember their father and that he had no underlying conditions. That's what's so scary about COVID. He had no underlying conditions whatsoever. None. Two weeks before the vaccine came out, he yeah. was going to get it. Yeah. He was oh, ready he was. to get That's it. That's interesting. Yeah. He was going to get it. He was going to get it. Yeah. Well, she and she summed it up right at the end. We have the answer. Let's use it. In fact, she said he wanted to have a press conference from his hospital bed. Really? To let people know, his constituents know, how real the virus was. Yeah. My heart aches for her because you can really feel her pain, but you also see her strength and her commitment now into helping others. That was really, really a beautiful story. Congresswoman, thank you for sharing yes. your story. Thank you.